Welcome to the podcast of uh, the Flynn Chemical Equations Worksheet. What I want to do is kind of talk through the different questions that have been posed here as possible questions. Uh, please feel to um, ask me questions if you need to. My email address would be jbergman, hello, I put in the black pen here, it would be jbergman at Woodland Park School Districts or WPSD K12. Dot org. All right, our first question here is a solution ammonia is added to dilute solution of acetic acid. All right, so here we have ammonia. So we know ammonia, of course, is NH3, and it's going to react with a dilute solution of acetic acid. Acetic acid would be HC2H3O2. Now, you don't dissociate the acetic acid, of course, because it's a weak acid. This is an acid-base reaction, so what's going to happen is the hydrogen from the acetic acid is going to donate to the ammonia, and it's going to make ammonium, okay, for my class that would be his partner, plus acetate, C2H3O2-. minus. So that is the entire reaction, um, and you're supposed to identify the conjugate acid-base pairs. Now, the proton donor is the acid, so that makes this is the acid, and that the proton acceptor is the ammonia, so that would be the base. Remember, uh, acids and bases are bad. Base acceptor, so bad, B-A-A-D, base acceptor, acid donor. What does a sheep say? Bad. All right, so that makes the ammonium, since you received this, that makes him the conjugate acid, and the acetate is the conjugate base. So that's question letter A. Now let's look at our second question, our B. What would be this one here? Here in this question we have solutions of sodium hydroxide. Now remember, all sodium compounds are soluble. So this is going to be dissociated into Na positive plus OH negative. And it, and now remember acetic acid, like our previous problem, is a weak acid. So you sleeve weak acids together, and, uh, and this is a strong base, so you dissociate it. Um, if equal volumes of, all right, now we're just going to do the reaction here. Again, we have this deal. The hydrogen will move itself. Hydrogens and hydroxides love each other, and that forms water, H2O, plus the acetate ion. There you go, plus the sodium. But, of course, the sodium is a spectator, so the sodium gets canceled out, and so this is your overall reaction. The second question, or the second portion says, um, acetic acid is a weak acid. If equal volumes of equal molar solutions are mixed with a solution of a pH of 7, greater than 7, less than 7, etc. Well, the thing is, is if you have equal volumes of this, so let's say you have 5 millimoles of this and 5 of this, do a little ice table if you really want to see this, minus 5, that'll be 0, minus 5, that'll be 0. But with the acetate, you'll be 0 plus 5 means 5, which means that you're going to have some acetate ion left over. And acetate is the anion of a weak acid. And the anion of a weak acid, acid is always a base. So its pH will, uh, pH will be greater than 7 because it is a ba the acetate ion is basic. Got it? All right, let's look at one. This would be letter C. Hydrogen sulfide gas is bubbled through excess potassium hydroxide. Now, hydrogen sulfide gas is going to be H2S. You leave that together. It's not like a strong acid or anything else. If you want to write G here, it's not necessary, but it's okay to write that down. It's bubbled through excess potassium hydroxide solution. So that is a K positive plus OH negative. You dissociate it because the potassium um, is always soluble. All potassium uh, salts are soluble. Um, write the successive ionization equations of H2S. Okay. So what's going to happen is, again, we've got H here, and the H is going to want to, H's and OH's love each other. So this is going to make it HOH, so that's better, plus HS minus. Um, now, this is an excess. Probably what's going to happen, actually, is you're going to make, um, I'll stand corrected, S2 minus. You're going to add that. It's going to donate both hydrogens to the water. The potassium is a spectator, so this is the answer. And the second portion says write the successive ionizations, and that's what I was kind of headed to. If you write H2S plus OH minus, that's going to make, um, you know, I'm going to need to put a 2 here to balance that equation, aren't I? Um, yeah. And so what you're going to have here and a 2 here because you have to balance the equation, uh, you're going to have to then make, you'll make um, water, HOH plus HS minus. And then the HS minus then continues to react with the OH minus to make water plus S2. 
2 minus. So that's these are the different steps or reaction steps. All right. Let's look at the next how that goes. This next one we have solid barium oxide. Now notice if it's a solid, then of course you can write them together. So that's BaO, and that reacts with distilled water. I love to write water as HOH. Now this is a um, metal oxide. You should have memorized that metal oxides plus water always makes bases. Metal oxides plus water makes bases. So the base that you make will be the barium base, which is going to be barium, B-A-O-H-2. Now, just as a quick note, this is a bit controversial. Barium hydroxide is considered a strong base sort of kind of ish. So this is just going to be, so it's probably better to write B-A-2 positive plus 2-O-H minus. Is this relation is the uh, resulting solution acidic, basic, or neutral? Well, remember I said that uh, metal a metal oxides plus water make bases, so therefore this is a base. Because of course, why is it a base? They say explain. It is because of the presence of additional hydroxide ions, and hydroxide is basic. Let's look at question E. Now I like this one. In this one, we've got calcium oxide again, a solid. So that's that solid oxide, Ca. Remember, calcium has a two positive, oxide a two negative charge, and so that's going to be that. And that reacts, or exposed to a stream of carbon dioxide gas. Now here we have a metal oxide, and here we have a non-metal oxide. If you take a metal oxide, non-metal oxide, you metal oxide, you always make a salt that contains oxygen. So if you take calcium, carbon, and oxygen, the compound that you're going to make is CaCO3. What type of reaction has occurred? You take two reactions, turn into one. This would be a synthesis reaction. Synth, I-S-I-S, -I or whatever. You can figure out how to spell some. All right, let's take a look at letter F. In letter F, we've got solid dinitrogen pentoxide. All right, solid again, So, and it's dinitrogen pentoxide, so that'll be N2O5, and it's added to water. Well, I hope you're seeing the pattern here. This is a non-metal oxide. Non-metal oxide plus water make acids. So here we're going to make some variety of an acid, and it's going to be hydrogen. You're going to have either going to make HNO3 or HNO2, because it's going to be a nitrogen. It's one of these two. How do you know which one it is? All right, the way you'd know this is you have to look at the oxidation numbers of all the chemicals. This is not a redox reaction, so that the nitrogens must stay of the same charge. So what is the ch oxidation number of nitrogen in in 205? Well, O is minus five, is 5, so this would be negative 10. O is negative 2, pardon me, in 5 of them. So it would be like 2x plus negative 10, of course, equal to 0, because the charge of n to a 5 is 0. So here we have a charge of positive 5. So which of these two is a charge of positive 5? I believe it's the nitric. We'll check. That would be 1 plus x minus 6 equals 0, and yes, it is the nitric acid. So it's nitric acid, right? Um, wrong. Actually, it turns out, of course, nitric acid, as you should know, is a strong acid, so you'd write H positive plus NO3 negative. Now, that's not a balanced equation, because I can see like two H's and only one H and two N's. I believe we're going to have to put a 2 here and a 2 here. That gives me six O's, and that's the balanced equation. Is it acidic, basic, or neutral? Of course, since you make a strong acid, it would be acidic. Notice how the second portion of the question kind of gives you some clues to the final answer. Sometimes that's actually a good news to look at that. Let's do letter G, carbon disulfide gas, or uh, vapor, so that'd be CS2, right, is burned in excess oxygen. Okay, now you've got an element, and it, they've given you a clue about oxidizing agents. So this is a redox reaction, so the O has to kind of change its charge. And so um, hopefully you're seeing on this one, what you're going to have to do is the carbon loves to get together with oxygen, make a very common compound, CO2. And then the other compound is going to be SO2. Uh, they're just going to both uh, kind of split and both uh, react with the oxygen. And then to balance this equation, a little tricky, you're going to need to have a 2 in front of the SO2, and then you need more oxygen, so that makes that a 3, which is the oxidizing agent. Now, oxidizing agent is the substance that gets reduced. So what is being reduced? The O has a zero charge, and it's going to minus two charge. And so his charge is going down. So the, the thing that's reducing, or the oxidizing agent, is the oxygen. So the oxygen is the answer. All right, let's take a look at the next one, letter H. Lithium metal is burned in air. So again, we have a pure element. Lithium metal is burned in air. Now what's in air? 
Of course, the key thing in air is oxygen. There's also nitrogen, but nitrogen is not nearly as reactive as oxygen. And this is simply going to just burn. And what it compounded with Li and O, it'd be Li2O. Of course, because lithium has a positive charge, and O has a minus 2 charge, and that makes it this. To balance this equation, you'll need to put a 2 here and a 4 there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Besides combustion, what type of reaction could this be classified as? This would also be a synthesis reaction. All right. All right. Let's take a look at our next one. Let's do a couple more. This particular kind of short podcast. I actually have to get to a track meet. A solution of diamine silver one chloride. Now that sounds just very, very um, uh, intimidating. But amine is ammonia. That's ammonia. Di tells you there's two. And silver, of course, one. And it's a solution. So diamine silver would be Ag NH3. Two positive plus Cl negative because all chlorides are soluble with a couple of exceptions. This is not one of it. It's added to solution of dilute nitric acid. Nitric acid is a strong acid, so we'd say H positive plus NO3 negative. And we got to see what's going to happen now. If you ever see hydrogen with like old ammonia, they love each other. So the hydrogen is going to get together and make the uh, ammonium ion. All right, so now the ammonium is gone, and you've got the silver positive, so that's going to add the silver is going to get together with the chloride because this is one of the exceptions and makes a precipitate. The nitrate becomes a spectator and falls out. To balance this, you'll need a 2 here and a 2 here. What's the driving force for this reaction? Um, what's causing this reaction is primarily the fact that you can make silver chloride. I, I think... Um, you also, the fact that ammonium is always going to react with hydrogen, I think it's a combo deal. I, I think it's both. I'm looking at what is the expected answer. I'm not sure I completely agree. Okay, J, a concentrated solution of ammonia. All right, so ammonia is NH3, and this is concentrated, is added to solution of zinc hydroxide. All right, a suspension of zinc hydroxide. So a suspension, you'd write that together, ZnOH2. All right, so what are you going to happen here? Now, ammonia really loves hydrogen, but this this is hydroxide, so it's not it's not going to do this. What's going to happen is the zinc is one of those uh, transition metals that like to make these coordination or complex ions, coordination compounds or complex ions. So this is going to be Zn, and of course you always the ligand ammonia is a ligand, and so you're going to double the charge of zinc, make that a four, two positive. Okay, sorry, back to where I was at. All right, that's going to make this. And then that kicks out, of course, the additional hydroxide. Now, to balance this, you'll, of course, need four ammonias and uh, two hydroxides. Okay, now the second part, what are the possible molecular geometries for the complex ion product? Now, I think that's a little harder than the real test is going to be. Um, because you've got four connections to zinc, my guess is, of course, it's most likely um, it's going to be tetra tetrahedral or possibly like a square planar. Because if you've got one chemical with four things sticking out, it can be a square planar, or it can be um, tetrahedral, one of those two, because that's the only things that pretty much have four. It could also be seesaw, actually, now that you think about it. Um, but, um, again, I think that question is a little bit excessive. We'll do more, and then I need to get to the track meet, and then I'll do a second one. All right, excess concentrated sodium hydroxide. Okay, you, you'll dissociate this, of course, because it is a sodium compound, strong base as well, is added to solution of aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum hydroxide, a solute, oh, solid, so that would be AlOH3. Now, this seems weird. you got hydroxide adding to the hydroxide. Again, this is one of those complex ions. Remember, aluminum could, can be a transition metal, and so you can make AlOH6, 3 negative, the complex ion. You'll need to put a 3 here. Name the complex ion form. You'd say, oh, what would that be? Um, you would say hexa hydroxo aluminum 3. Actually, you would probably necessarily have to put the 3. Now, as a side note, um, I know you AP teachers who are watching this might also note that um, this is an acceptable AP answer, which is what I teach my students. But I do know that AL, um, when it gets together with hydroxide, actually, it's sort of something you just need to know, actually tends to form the ALOH4 compound with a negative charge. But uh, this is always acceptable due to the fact that it kind of follows the rule. So I teach my students the rule, and if they know the exception, that's great, but it's not necessarily 
uh, the deal. I'm going to stop there. It gives us a good uh, starting point for our next visit. Bye.